In the waters of baptism, Brian died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory.
I welcome you here this morning to the Catholic Parish Church of St. Columbanus here in Belibor. Um, words fail. It's with a heavy heart we come to bring Brian before God. I greet in a particular way Michael and Anna, Brian's mum, whom I know is watching from Tullamore Hospital. I greet all of you who are standing outside and here in the church this morning in our restricted numbers as we come before God to commend Brian's soul to eternal life. We begin this Mass as we begin all our ceremonies by signing ourselves at the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us begin by calling to mind the times when we failed God, the times when we failed each other. Let us call to mind our sins. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. A moment in silent prayer, we pray for Brian. Almighty God and Father, it is our faith that your Son who died on the cross was raised up again from the dead. He is the first fruit of all who have fallen asleep. Grant through this mystery your servant Brian, who has gone now to his rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. This prayer we ask for our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We listen to our first and second reading now, and I invite you to be seated. Reading from the book of Job, then Job answered and said, Oh, that my words were written down. What if they were inscribed in a record that with an iron chisel and with lead they were cut into rock forever? For as for me, I know that my vindicator lives and that he will stand forth upon the dust and why myself shall see. My own eyes, not the others, shall behold him and from my flesh I said, I shall see God. My inmost being is consumed with longing. The word of the Lord. <laughs>
from the first letter of St. John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know what when he appears. We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he really is. The word of the Lord. to the stands to hear the gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Peace I bequeath to you. My peace I give you. A peace the world cannot give. This is my gift to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. Trust in God and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. If there were not, I should tell you. And now I am going to prepare a place for you. And after I have gone and prepared you that place, I shall return to take you with me. So where I am, you may be too. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated for a few moments. Sherry, friends, Michael, Anna, um, many, many of Brian's good neighbours and friends watching in, listening to me this morning. I want to share a few words with you um, written by Sister Joyce Roop, who is an award-winning author and retreat director and conference giver. 
One of her books, she titles it, Pray Our Goodbyes. It's the second edition of a book that she wrote in 1988. The word goodbye, it was originally the old English word of God be with you or go with God. It was a recognition that our going was very much part and parcel of God. When you dreaded or feared a journey, there was strength in remembering that the one who gave life would be there to protect and so on. Sherry, I'm sure that was your feelings if, when you left Thailand to come to live here in Ireland. Fear and trepidation, worry for the future. But having Brian by your side, I'm sure, gave you great consolation and knowledge that you would be cared for. The goodbye to your family at that time was a blessing of love. But we Christians believe that God is with us and that we're never alone. Comfort and strength and blessings come from God's blessing. Sister Joyce examines the whole human aching that stems from painful goodbyes. Goodbyes that parents have to say to their siblings, to their children, spouses, to husbands, friends, to good neighbours. The good sister asks us to ponder these farewells and to confront what they mean to us as Christians. She writes about suffering and makes it clear that God is not behind accidents or death or disease or tragedies or indeed COVID. Sister is fast to point out that God is very much present in a loving and caring way when suffering and pain knocks on our door. Jesus suffered, she reminds us, and soon it will be Holy Week again. It will be a time to remember that a young man of 33 years of age also died, but died for us willingly. We'll be reminded in that holy of all weeks that Jesus' sweat became blood. The suffering Jesus endured is a model for us to follow. During hard times, during times of sufferings, it is wise to realise that really, friends, we're only on loan on this earth of ours. It's the untimely passing of Brian, the tender age of 47, that we're reminded of that this morning, that life is fragile. It's dreadful, but we thirst for the knowledge that one day we will meet again. We're pilgrims on this earth, and pilgrims destined for the gates of heaven, where therein there will be no more suffering, pain, loss, separation, anxiety, disease, no way. With this in mind, we learn to pray our goodbyes with a little consolation, not much, just a glimmer. Because for us, death is a comma, not a full stop. In the Theravada Buddhist tradition, they believe that when someone dies, they are reborn again. And for us Christians, we call this resurrection. And so it is with the hope of resurrection in our hearts that we can deal with our sufferings, with our losses, that we can abandon ourselves to God. The funeral mass where we bring Brian this morning is about praying for him, praying for all those who've gone before us in a small human effort to speedily bring them through the gates of heaven. That's why we're here this morning. We're here this morning because Brian was a baptized Christian. He's been robbed of us. This year has robbed so many of loved ones so much pain, so much worry, so much anxiety. Where else would we come but before God to plead for help, for mercy, for strength? All of you here this morning, those watching in, Sherry, you're listening to these words and you indeed have your own stories to tell. Some of your stories I'm sure will make you laugh. Some will make you cry and bring copious tears to your eyes. And these stories are sacred to you. There was a time when in life 
you laughed so much, you cried. And you cried so much that you laughed. And please God, you'll get to tell those stories at a later opportunity when our restrictions are lifted. Anna, I'm sure, and Michael, you'll tell stories of growing up in Surrey when you were sent off as boys to Our Lady Immaculate Junior School to learn all about life and love, catechism, preparing Brian for First Holy Communion and the Confirmation in Chesington. I'm sure many of his friends going to school will share those memories, the laughs, and in recent years, the memories of blood rushing adrenaline when Brian took on high sporting activities, and I use my own words here, when mad men and women would wrap a giant elastic band around their legs and jump off cliff edges and out of planes, etc., in a mind-boggling attempt to defeat meeting God all too soon. I, for my part, would have prepared, preferred to sit on the couch with a box of Jaffa cakes with Brian rather than do any of those adrenaline rushing activities. I'm sure the Jaffa cakes and the television are much better for one's blood pressure. I think of his work colleagues this morning from Musgraves and so many other walks of life that he, he feels that his friends who share their memories this morning about Brian, the quiet gentleman as he has been described. It's with these memories and, and so, so many more that we bring ourselves back here to God's presence. We bring this Christian soul before the Lord and ask the Lord in the simple three phrases, Lord have mercy. In the Old Testament, we read from the book of Maccabees, God's own words. He says, it is a holy and a wholesome thought to pray for the dead. That's what we're here for this morning. Not just to pray for Brian, but for Sherry, for Michael, for David and his wife and all Anna and all of Brian's friends who will sorely mourn his loss. That's our prayer this morning. That Brian will be reunited with his father Mick and the gates of heaven may be thrown open to him and that he may rest in peace. Amen. I invite you to stand now as our prayer of the faithful is read for us. Lord God, as we present Brian's soul to your heavenly care, we give thanks for the gift of his life. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being part of his life and family. In faith and trust, we ask you to grant Brian peace and rest so he, he so richly deserves. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for Brian, who in baptism was given the promise of eternal life, true love and kindness of God. May he be welcomed into the company of the saints in heaven. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the family and friends of Brian in these di difficult days. May the Lord be the strength and consolation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the doctors and nurses and all the staff at Navin Hospital, St. James's Hospital and the Mother Hospital, who looked after Brian so lovingly, ensured his comfort and afforded him great kindness in his final days. God bless them in their daily walk. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let's turn to Mary, the mother of Jesus, who stood by the cross as Jesus was dying that she may pray for us, for Sherry, and for all the family. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Lord Jesus, support us all the day long, until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes, and the busy world is hushed, and the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant to us, your children, a safe lodging, a holy rest, and peace at last. We make all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Please be seated.
your servant, on whose funeral day we offer you this sacrifice, so that, should any stain of sin have clung to him, or any human fault affected him, it may by a living, loving gift be wiped away and forgiven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that you give our salvation. Always let you to give thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him, the hope of blessed resurrection is dawn. That those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made very clear in heaven. And so, angels and archangels, and thrones and dominions, of the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all glories. Make holy, therefore, the peace we pray, by sending out your spirit upon the night of your fall, so that it may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave it his throat, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you will drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gracious be my peace in our days. Have been a help in your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as you wait the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory, and the glory of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. You have not our sins for the faith of your church. And graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, we live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus here present be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, behold him, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, for you say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Oh, 
Let us, let us pray. Lord God, your Son Jesus Christ, gave us the sacraments of his body and blood to guide us our pilgrimage way to your kingdom. May our Lord Ryan share the Eucharist, home to the of life that Christ has prepared for all of us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just on behalf of Cherry, the Cherry's family, I'm sure are watching in Thailand this morning, and Brian's family, for Michael and his mother Anna. Thank you for your presence, your prayers, and the liturgy, reading, the presence outside, air support in this tragic and untimely time for them. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you now to stand for our final prayers and congregation. My dear sisters and brothers of Jesus Christ, trusting in God, we have prayed together this morning for Brian. And now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we will joyfully greet Brian again, for the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. In this moment now, silent prayer, and sprinkle. Brian and Holy Water. A reminder of the time when Anna and Nick, his parents, brought him to be baptized. And then incense his body with holy incense. A reminder that the body is sacred. It is the temple of the Holy Spirit that he us since our confirmation, but also that our prayers, like the incense, will rise to God. Our response is, receive his soul presented to God the Most High. Receive his soul presented to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to meet great of the Lord. Receive his soul presented to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to presence of the Receive his soul presented to God the Most High. Eternal rest, grant unto you, O Lord. And let perpetual light shine upon you. Receive his soul, the presented to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we command our Lord of Brian, the sure and certain hope, that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to Brian and help us to remain to comfort one another 
with the assurances of our faith. Until we all meet one day in Christ and are with you and our brother forever through Christ our Lord. By the angels leave you to paradise, may the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city in you and return to Jerusalem. And where Lazarus is poor and long, may you find eternal rest. In peace now, friends, let us take Brian our brother to his place of rest.
So look guys, maybe go to your car, set up here, we're start to gather so we'll set up there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it.